Hello and welcome to this video on the dividend discount model. In this video I'm going to do a demonstration of how you can value a company using the dividend discount model and I'm going to apply it to the company Australian Vintage Limited. The purpose of this video is just to, for educational purposes to show how a dividend discount model is applied. I'm not trying to get an accurate valuation and this is in no way investment advice. It's just a demonstration on how to go through the process. So here I've set up a spreadsheet ready to value Australian Vintage Limited using the dividend discount model. And I'm going to step you through the process of how to do this valuation. What we'll be doing in this valuation essentially is applying the discounted dividend model, which has this formula. And I'll be following through these seven steps. So I'm going to be calculating the value of a firm's equity. And step one is to forecast net dividends. So I need the dividend forecast for each year into the future. So I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet and I'm going to say, okay, I've got this line here that says forecast dividends and I've got 2019, 2020, and then into the future. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to say, okay, in 2019, what were the dividends? That's something that's already happened. It's time that's passed. I'm going to go to the forecasting tab, looking back at our forecasting template. And in 2019, my forecast dividend payout ratio and my calculation of net payments to shareholders is here. So this is the dividend that I expect to be paid in 2019. Then I've got the 2020, the actuals. Then I've got my forecast dividends for future years. So this first step of the dividend discount model is to get the forecast dividends for future years. And I've done that in my forecast template already, and I've got it for 2021, two, three, four, and five. So I've got five years of forecast dividend payments here. In this spreadsheet, I've got it going out to six years. So here it's blank. I haven't calculated that one. I haven't forecast that yet. So I'll come back to that, but that's going to be a terminal value year for me. So step two is to estimate the cost of capital for equity. So step one, I've got the dividends forecast for each year into the future. Now I need to know this RE term, estimate the cost of capital for equity. So in my spreadsheet here, I've got estimated cost of capital here. I've put 7.59% and I've put a little note to the side. We're going to learn how to estimate the cost of capital after we've done the valuation models. So if you're trying to apply these models at this point in time, just put a number like 7%, 8% just to build the model. Then later on, when we learn how to actually calculate or estimate the cost of equity capital, you can change that number here and it will flow through into your formulas. So I need to put in my discount factor, which essentially is this part of the formula, the denominator each line, one plus the cost of equity capital to the power of T, year one, year two, year three, etc. So in 2021, I'm going to say equals one plus my cost of capital, which is 7.59% to the power of, it's in year one, so I'm going to the power of year one. And then I'm going to make sure this 7.59%, I want to keep referencing that cell. So I'm going to put the dollar signs in to absolute reference it. I'm going to drag that across each year. This is my discount factor. All I've done here, for example, in year five, I've got one plus 7.59% to the power of five. In Excel here, I'm applying this part of the formula. 1 plus 7.59% is the cost of equity capital to the power of 5 in year 5. Step 3 is then to discount future dividends to the present value. I've got the dividend. I've calculated the discount factor. So I just divide the dividend by the discount factor. And that's step 3. My dividend divided by my discount factor is my present value of dividends. So I can drag that along as well. Step 4, I need to forecast dividend growth patterns beyond the forecast horizon T. So in my forecast template, I have forecast five years of dividends. Okay, so I've got my dividends for five years into the future. Now I need to forecast what's likely to happen in the future after that. And in this example, I'm going to be using a terminal value assumption. And I've put, I'm going to assume my dividends are growing by 2% every year. So in year six, what is my dividend payment going to be in year six? I'm going to say equals last year's times... 1 plus 2%. I think the dividends are going to grow by 2% every year into the future. So my year 6 dividend I have just calculated as being 2% higher than the previous year. Now this 2% number here, this is the terminal value growth assumption. You will have to come up with that assumption yourself when you're valuing a company. Here I've just used 2% as a simple sort of growth example here. 
We're now up to step five, which is to calculate the terminal value at the forecast horizon. So here I want to calculate my terminal value. So I'm going to say equals my year six dividend, and I'm going to divide through by the cost of equity capital minus the growth rate. And this gives me the terminal value. If we look at this slide, it'll tell us about the different terminal value choices or assumptions you can make. In this example, we're using the third terminal value assumption. I've said the dividend was the year five dividend times one plus my 2% growth rate. So I've calculated the dividend for year six. Then I'm dividing through by the cost of capital, 7.59% minus my 2% growth rate. So that's calculating the terminal value there, this top part. The terminal value was the year six dividend divided through by the cost of equity capital minus the 2% growth rate. But this is in year five. The terminal value is valued at, as at year five. So I also need to take the present value of my terminal value. So I take the year five value and divide through by the year five discount factor. So I now have the present value of the terminal value. Okay, so step six has been done. I've discounted the terminal value to present value. Step seven, add the discounted dividends and discounted terminal value for total equity value. The total equity value is equal to my present value of my terminal value plus each of my present value dividends from years one to five. I'm not double counting here. I'm taking every year into the future the discounted dividends. So I've got the year one, two, three, four, and five discounted dividends. And then this present value of terminal value takes year six out to infinity. Okay, so I'm taking the present value of each year's dividend cash flow. I add that up and I get the total value of equity for the business. And previously I've got the number of shares and I've calculated that, sorry, I've, I've um, found that in the 2020 annual report for Australian Vintage Limited. So to then come up with a price per share, I'm taking the total equity value that I've just calculated. I'm dividing through by the number of shares the company has outstanding and I can come up with a price per share. Based on these estimates, I'm calculating or estimating a price per share of about 16 cents. And the current share price of the company when I put this spreadsheet together was 62 cents. So based on the dividend discount model estimation I've put forward here, I'm estimating the company is currently overvalued and I would recommend a sell. Now again, not investment advice, this is educational only. I'm not trying to create an accurate valuation here. I'm just trying to show you how the spreadsheet gets built. I'm not saying that this 2% growth is in any way going to be accurate. So what we've just done is we've followed the dividend discount model. We've gone through these one to seven steps and essentially all we're doing is applying this formula. The dividends come from the forecast template. I estimate the cost of capital for equity, which we'll talk about. And then it just comes down to this terminal value calculation. To calculate the terminal value, we have three choices. We could choose the terminal value to be zero, limited life project or project you think is going bankrupt. You could think the terminal value will just be the same dividend every year in the future, in which case you just divide through by the cost of equity, then present value. Or the terminal value could be a dividend with growth, which is the demonstration we've just gone through. You then add up all the discounted dividends to get your total equity value, divide through by the number of shares to get an estimated price per share. I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much.